My name is Tobias Veninger. During these sessions, we're trying to educate you on certain technologies or demonstrate you how to configure certain configuration settings. In this example, we're going to set up an NTP server and make sure that we have a couple of switches that can synchronize that time with this NTP server. We have an Ubuntu server running the NTP daemon, we have a provision switch and we have a comware based switch. We think that an NTP server is really important inside your infrastructure to make sure you have, you have a consistent timing between your switches, between your management servers, between your servers and maybe also between firewall or other kinds of components that you're running inside your infrastructure. Let's first connect to the Ubuntu NTP server. I'm going to use SSH and I also want to start up Wireshark to make sure that I can see if NTP packets are coming into the server or are sent by the server. So therefore I'm going to also to enable my X11 forwarding through my SSH tunnel. Let me log on to my Ubuntu server. Let me make sure that I make the screen a little bit smaller so that we can fit everything on the screen. This is the Ubuntu server. I already installed the NTP daemon. As you can see, the NTP daemon is running. In order to configure the NTP daemon, you need to edit a file that's placed in the slash etc directory named ntp.conf. A lot of the configuration entries in this file are default. The only thing I changed is the following. These are the default server pool that Ubuntu is using to synchronize the time. I set up another server pool because I always think it is important to take time servers that are close as possibly to the location where you're placing this server or where you're placing your time server to make sure you have the lowest delay, less offset, etc. So I'm I, on the website, on the internet, you can find a lot of multiple time servers. I'm using this NL pool because I'm based in the Netherlands. As you also can see on the first one, I added an entry named iBurst. The reason I do that is when the NTP daemon starts, iBurs make sure that we're going to immediately synchronize as quickly as possible with the server. By default, NTP is going into a certain drift mode and trying to set up uh, and establish a certain session with all these servers and then uh, starts to publish timing or react on time request. So that can take up to 5 between 20 minutes. This will speed up the NTP daemon. This is the default settings for uh, for IP version 4, uh, as you see the minus 4 here, to make sure that everybody can exchange time, but you, you can't change the configuration on the server. Uh, and I also make sure we have a fallback configured here that if I'm losing my connection to the internet, uh, we're going to use the local time as the fallback. With the NTP daemon, there is also a command named ntp.q, where you can talk to the NTP daemon, in this example, I'm going to look at if I have peer connected. As you can see here, I have remote peers, and you can f uh, figure out what the delay is, what the offset is, and what the jitter is. So let me start Wireshark. Okay, I want to monitor Wireshark on my ETH0. There it goes, and I want to filter it on NTP packets. So let's have a look on my provision switch. We can have a look with show version that we run in K15 software on this one. So if we are going to verify the time, so today is March 29, so this is correct. So we want to make sure that we set a different time before we're going to synchronize with the time server to make sure that we see changes happening. So let's change the time to So time has changed, so if we do show time, we can see it's now April 7th, 1999. 
so when we are configuring uh, time we first need to say okay what kind of protocol we're using by default the provision is using time p so we are going to using SNTP then we're going to use it in unicast mode and we're going to make sure that we set up a server because we can set up multiple servers for redundancy we, can, we, we need to give it a priority I'm going to give it priority of number one you can also change the version uh, from one to seven the default version is version 3. Uh, my NTP daemon supports version 4 by default and then falls, falls back to 3, 2 and 1. So it is backwards compatible. So I leave it up to the default configuration. Now we can show the show time. As you can see, it's still April the 7th and we don't have any packets configured here. We don't see any packets coming into our NTP server. So if I do show SNTP, I can verify, okay, authentication is disabled. We can enable that later if you want to have a more secure infrastructure. Time synchronization mode is SNMP, SNTP. Uh, the mode is unicast. Um, and the port is 720 and the IP selection is the outgoing interface. This is the IP address and this is the version ID. So everything is set up correct. The reason why we don't see any packets coming in is because this 720 seconds is the default polling interval. If we can change that, for example, to speed it up. And now you can see, okay, packets coming in. You can see packet coming in from the switch to the NTP server. And you can verify what the packet is. And the, and the time server is pushing a new packet back with, with, with another timing. So now if we do show time, you can see the time has changed from April the 7th, 1999 to March 29, 2013. You can also verify this if if the the offset is more than three the more than three seconds you will see an entry created in the lock so I will do a reverse so that I see the first the latest entries first as you can see here updated time by seconds from that server to from April 7 to March 29 so this is the configuration and we want to of course make sure that we save this. So let's move to the provision or to the conware side. So on the conware, we can show the time with display clock. As you can see, it's also 29 of March here at the same time, more or less. So if you want to, if we want to change this, um, oh sorry, I need to go back to another mode, and I can change the timing. So let's specify the time first. Let's say it is 11 and then we can configure the date. In this example, let's say we're going to use up, oh, but then in the year 2000. So if you now display the clock, hey, we can see it's now 11, the April, etc. of the year 2000. So let's configure. Let's go into the system configuration mode and let's configure an NTP service. We're also going to use unicast server and we're going to make sure we set up the right IP address. Okay, you can also here you can select the version but we're going to leave it default. Then we can display NTP session to figure out okay it already has a session, uh, it's going, uh, the session is already established with the master uh, and we can see what the status of the NTP server is. As you can see the status is synchronized, the clock stratum, this is the reference clock is using. And you can see the reference time. So now if you do display clock, you can see it has changed to Friday 29 of March again. You can also see here packets coming in, uh, NTP client packets and the server is responding with this proper timing. So I think this way you can very easily set and you can even automate these configurations with Intelligent Management Center if you need to do a lot of switches at the same time. But this way you make sure you have the consistent timing between your infrastructure. Thank you very much.